Welcome to Scottish Cheese Trail. My name is Wendy Barry and today we're going to look at what cheeses in Scotland are on the international Slow Food Arc of Taste. So Slow Food is an international movement uh, for supporting local produce, seasonal produce, and it's all about food being good, clean and fair. And as part of that, they have a big website called the Slow Food International Arc of Taste, which is about supporting biodiversity and its heritage foods and forgotten foods from across the whole world. So it's really interesting. So in Scotland, we have some Arc of Chase cheeses and I'm leader for the Arc of Taste in Scotland. So it's been very interesting researching all the different produce we have here in this lovely country. So what makes a cheese from Scotland suitable for the International Arc of Taste? Well, it's a very specific criteria. It has to be the breed of the animal, the feed of the animal, the traditional skills used to create that product, in this case cheese, and indeed also very fundamental is that there's a history of that product being made in that place. So if anything is territorial, then the cheeses for the Arc of Taste are definitely that. So what cheeses have we got in Scotland that are on the Arc of Taste? Well, we have two cheesemakers, one in Ayrshire and one in Fife. And between them, we have four cheeses on that international arc of taste. So our Fife cheese maker is Jane Stewart and she's at the St Andrews Farmhouse Cheese Company and produces two beautiful cheeses, the Ainster and her farmhouse cheese. Now all these are made with cow's milk, hers are Holsten Frisian. Now the Frisian breed is very traditional to Fife because it links back to the Dutch traders who were regularly plying between the Fife fishing villages and the Dutch coast. And in fact, you can see that to this day with the pan tiles on the roofs of the fishing villages right along the East Nook. And so the Frisian is very much something of its place in Fife. And Jane and her husband Robert have a closed herd of Holstein Frisians and all the food is on the farm. So a traditional cheese, made in a traditional way with an old heritage culture and she makes these a range of stunning products but these ones the Einster is usually about two to four months old sometimes a little older and it's a slightly lemony tangy flavour and it's a slightly crumbly cheese and a paler cheese as you can see and really delicious. The other one both cloth wrapped is the farmhouse cheese which is buttery it's a it's a, an older cheese um, it's always about nine months or even older and it's got a delicious rich yellowy buttery colour as well and as it matures and you can buy an extra mature one it becomes up there with a the parmesan and I would gladly grate it on my my pasta dishes as well as serving it on the cheese board. Anster is the old name for Anstruther and that is the place which is near their farm and as I say very much of its place with that sea air and the slightly salty breeze coming in over the meadow and there are elderly folk in the area that will come up to Jane and say oh your Einster tastes just like my granny's just like my great granny's so it's definitely got the heritage of its place and that would have been the cheese that was made in that region. Over in Ayrshire the cow for the Ayrshires is the Ayrshire cow and that is what Anne Dorward is using on Dunlop Dairy. And in fact, Dunlop is a wee uh, hamlet in Ayrshire and the cows, the Ayrshire cows, used to actually be called Dunlop Cow. And it was the house cow everybody would have had and if they were living in uh, the rural countryside, they would have had their house cow and it would have in that area been the Dunlop Cow. So the recipe that Anne is using is dating back to the 17th century. Uh, the history is there, the cheese was being made with the Dunlop cow and this is the old recipe that she uses and it's a lovely um, farmhouse cheese but it has a creaminess and a butteriness and it's quite um, slightly sweet and nutty when it's younger and then as it matures it becomes a, an even deeper flavour and a bit more tangy, delicious both ways. That's her Dunlop. And last but not least, the fourth cheese on the International Arc of Taste is Anne's Crowdy. Now Anne makes the, the closest we have the original Crowdy in that it's Ayrshire milk from Ayrshire cows in Ayrshire. Now 
People would have made crowdy all over rural Scotland. But if they're in the Highlands, they'd be using a Highland cow. If they were in Galloway, they'd be using the Galloway. So it's fit and proper that in Ayrshire, it would be the Ayrshire cow. And um, the, the eating of crowdy in Scotland dates back to the Vikings and even the Picts. So it's a very ancient cheese, one of the oldest that we have in Scotland. A delicious, light, fresh cheese. So it's fascinating to visit the the areas, visit the regions to see the cheeses and taste the cheeses. Now you might wonder why they're all cow's cheese, because we have four terrific cheeses here, but we have great cheeses across Scotland. Why are they not on the International Arc of Taste? Well, as I said at the beginning, the criteria is very specific and it is important that it is the right breed in the right place. And these are all uh, for the Arc. And these are all cow's cheese, because if it was to be a used cheese, it would need to be a Scottish sheep and we do have quite a lot of native Scottish breeds and if it was to be a goat's cheese it would need to be those native Scottish goats and you'd have to catch them first but it wouldn't be impossible and the gate is open for more of these cheeses but currently the fantastic cheese makers we have that are making uh, cheese with ewe's milk or goats are using continental breeds and hence that's why they don't fit the art criteria although they can be fantastic cheeses. So we have Jane's cheeses in Fife, Anne's cheeses in Ayrshire, and you can find all the details about them on the Scottish Cheese Trail. So, until next time.